They want to make you believe that it was always the aliens who were communicating with prophets and there is no such thing as angels or God. The project is literally the secularization of the world. To completely strip the world from religious beliefs. We know the kind of event that it must have been. We know the sort of event that, that must have happened for the origin of life. What was that? It was the origin of the first self-replicating molecule. Right, how did that happen? I told you, we don't know. So you have no idea how it started? No, 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 no nor has anybody. Nor has anyone else. What do you think is the possibility that there, that intelligent design might turn out to be uh, the answer to some issues in uh, genetics or in, well, in evolution? It could come about in the following way. It could be that uh, at some earlier time, somewhere in the universe, a civilization e evolved by probably some kind of Darwinian means to a very, very high level of technology and designed a form of life that they seeded onto perhaps this, this planet. Um, now, th that is a possibility and an intriguing possibility. Mm -hmm. And I suppose it's possible that you might find evidence for that if you look at the, um, at the detail, details of biochemistry, molecular biology, you might find a signature of some sort of designer. There's an old joke about, you know, the scientist who is giving a talk about creation. And there's an old lady, old, old lady who stands up in the audience afterwards, you know, and she says, oh, you know, really, you're so ignorant. You're so ignorant. Don't you know that this entire world is balanced on the back of a giant turtle? And the scientist says, oh, ha, ha, you know, well, um, tell me, you know, and tell me, what is the turtle? standing on and the old lady just looks at him and says you are so stupid you're so stupid it's turtles all the way down now everybody laughs what an ignorant old lady it's turtles all the way down how silly okay fast forward to modern day okay you have a scientist standing up on stage and he's talking about the big bang as the origin of the universe and evolution through natural selection as the explanation for the diversity of life as we know it today, ask him where the life came from. You know what their answer is now? The most common answer that they're giving now? It came from outer space. Once again, just like what we we're talking about, that doesn't answer anything. Yeah. They're saying it came from aliens. Where did the aliens come from? Where did the aliens get the quality of life? Oh, they got it from other aliens. And where did they get it from? What is the origin of the aliens? What's the origin of the quality of life? Other aliens, other aliens, other aliens. Now you've got these so-called intelligent scientists looking like this ignorant old lady in the audience. Instead mm -hmm. of saying that it's turtles all the way down, they're saying it's aliens all the way up. Yeah.
you see the first verse of the Bible, book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The word God in Hebrew there is Elohim. They believe that the word Elohim that has been used for God in Jewish scripture is in fact the name of the extraterrestrial beings which have created mankind with their advanced technology. And therefore the word Elohim have historically been mistaken for gods. They want the whole humanity to accept these aliens as their creators and make the world ready for their arrival on earth. In fact, they built the third temple for the coming of Dajjal, and their aim is to make people believe that he is one of those extraterrestrial beings. Therefore, when Dajjal comes, those who believe in UFOs and aliens will accept him as their creator. And uh, there are many, many stories that uh, I heard from people that I trust of their own experience with jinn in the desert and things. So um, I think that there are people that have had experiences. We tend to ignore a lot of these things that happen to people, um, like alien abduction. Alien abduction is classic jinn stuff because the jinn do yuchtapaf. You know, people get taken by jinn. And, and they do things to them. And so these type of stories, and you have a lot of people that have had these experiences all over the world. Now I want to take you to the beginning where Iblis started his enmity with mankind. Do you know why did he refuse to prostrate to Adam alayhi salam? Because he became jealous of him. Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given jinn some amazing characteristics that we human beings don't have. Like they have more power, they can appear in different forms, they're invisible to us, they can flow into our bodies and so many other characteristics that we don't have. But still there's one thing that Iblis is jealous of and that's the intellect. Human beings are more intelligent than jinn. And because of his jealousy he said I'm better than Adam peace be upon him and I don't prostrate to him. So from that moment till now he uses any opportunity to show that he and his progeny is better than human beings. And today one of the biggest plans of Iblis is the alien agenda. In fact there is no such beings that people know as aliens from some science fiction movies or scientific documentaries. The UFOs are advanced military technology. And behind the real abduction cases there were always jinn, which are not extraterrestrial beings, rather they are extra dimensional beings who live on earth. Rael is a 33rd degree Freemason who established the Raelism based on the teachings of Lucifer. And he was always in contact with the jinn who were telling him how to proceed their agendas. So what are the agendas behind the Masonic religion of Raelism? First, they want to make people believe that there is no God. Second, Iblis and his progeny want people to believe that the aliens that are in reality jinn are more intelligent than mankind even in a level that the followers of this belief accept them as their creators and prostrate to them. Because it is the challenge of Iblis to show that he is better than mankind, and instead of him prostrating to Adam peace be upon him, human beings should prostrate to him and his progeny. Third, to encourage people practicing evil rituals and to give an extra push to the movements like sex positive feminism, homosexualism and etc. And fourth, to make the society ready for the new world order. Do you know why people fall for such big lies? Because they fully trust the education system and the scientists who are being broadcasted on media. And as we mentioned before, the media and education system are mostly focusing on what the system wants from them. The real intelligent scientists don't suggest these sick theories. They rather try to spread the true knowledge about the existence. 
and day by day we are witnessing an increasing number of scientists who believe in God. Because real science always indicates the existence of a wise being behind this physical reality. We are skeptical of claims for the ability of random mutations and natural selection to account for the complexity of life. Careful examination of, of the evidence for Darwinian theory should be encouraged. Skeptical. 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 Of claims for the ability for the ability of random mutations and natural selection to account for the complexity. Complexity. The complexity. The complexity. To account for the complexity of life. And in the short span of uh, about 40 years, in the short span about of yeah, that's what it is. 40 years, uh, you find now an increasing number of scientists believing in a creator and no, no longer able to discount a creator, but able to believe in a creator and to believe in what science suggests, such as the Big Bang. The problem is that the system doesn't promote those scientists who believe in God. They rather promote those who come on the screen and criticize specific religions. They never criticize. Judaism, and as a matter of fact, many of them are strong supporters of Israel, figure that out. I mean, that, that, that's very inconsistent with their beliefs, but that just is the way it is. I mean, most of them uh, do not, they shy away from criticizing Judaism, I think largely because uh, they know that to do so will get them into trouble, and they know which side their bread is buttered on. When they criti criticize Christianity, they criticize completely on the basis of the tenets of faith, which they cannot you know, they cannot accept. But when it comes to Islam, they don't touch the tenets of faith. Because the tenets of faith in Islam are not the issue for them. They always talk about deeply emotional uh, issues. Like, you know, they, you know, Islam uh, is just a bunch of terrorists. Or they subjugate, you know, women. Wait, wait a minute. If Islam subjugates women, why is the greatest number of converts to, uh, to Islam in first world countries America Europe and so on well, why why are they predominantly women, women. These, these are not these are intelligent intelligent women becoming Muslim they're not they're not stupid ignorant uh, uh, women these are intelligent women with well-formed uh, you know opinions and, and so on who are becoming Muslim as intelligent women why if they're if Islam sub subjugates women why would they do that ask them and you'll find the answer and it's fine because Islam does not subjugate women yeah you know, Islam, I mean, many of them will tell you that Islam sets them free. We shouldn't be ignorant about everything that science tells us. We should rather learn things and contemplate and distinguish false from truth. And at the same time, we shouldn't blindly accept whatever is being told to us. Science, in fact, is a method of gaining knowledge through observation of nature. And in multiple verses in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to observe nature and reflect upon his signs in the existence. Significantly, in Islam, religion and science are considered as two complementary sides of one reality. Whilst there exists no contradiction between the two, as both emanate from the same source. On the contrary, the Quran encourages people to think, to understand, to question, to criticize, and to find the truth with their intellect. Therefore, we should learn science in the light of faith and find the truth behind the signs that have been set there by the Almighty Creator. He created the whole existence full of signs for the people who reflect upon them.
very interesting video and um, there's so many things that have been mentioned do you guys believe in aliens i'm not talking about what the quran says i'm saying you personally do you believe in um aliens um does it speak does the bible speak on aliens as well because from the quran there was a passage that said there's other creatures that have been created as well even if there are other creatures my question is if we um if we're humans and we've been made above every living every other living creature then what's the problem why can't we exist with with whatever else exists out there and um i liked one thing that was said um ask your children what topics they learned when they come back from school and enlighten them on issues there's so many things said in this video so many things to touch upon that we should be very very careful of i hope this video makes us very much aware and there's another point that was said just because information has been given to you like this video doesn't mean we should accept everything this video um says we should question the video we should um research we should do all sorts of things for us to get to the bottom of it not everything not everything given to you is correct not everything given to you is um beneficial to you don't let anyone ever condition you whatever the case always question whatever evidence or material that you're given otherwise a big shout out to the person that suggested this and i'll see you in my next reaction video <music>